Hey, welcome back to the Bootstrap 4 Alpha tutorial. My name is Brad from bradhussey.ca and codecollege.ca. And in this video, we're gonna continue from where we left off and code up some of these feature sections in our startup style Bootstrap website. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is head back to our code editor and we're gonna continue down here under our stage markup and we're gonna start coding some features. So start off with a section with the ID of feature-1. It's gonna have a div, uh, a child with the class of uh, container. So a child div with the class of container. Uh, and then that's gonna have a div with the class of row. Within there, we're gonna have a div with the class of feature dash content. And then within feature content, we're gonna have a div with the class of call dash LG dash large, or sorry, call dash LG dash six. And uh, let's leave it at that and we'll, we'll keep going from there. So we have our six columns here. And then after our six columns, we're gonna have another div with the class of call-lg-5. It's also gonna have the class of call-lg-offset-1. What that's gonna do is gonna give us six columns on the left side and then we're gonna have five columns on the right, but we're just gonna have one column of space in between the six and the five column divs. Now in uh, this div is basically where we're going to have an iframe with a YouTube video. And I, I have one queued up here. It's uh, Jimmy Fallon and his crew doing the Star Wars theme acapella style. All you gotta do is go to YouTube and you just have to go ahead and click share, embed, copy this iframe right there, head back to your, your uh, code here and then paste it. The only thing that I did different was change the width to 100% instead of 560 or whatever. So I pasted that video. You can do whatever video you want. If you have a video, if you want to do the same one, uh, you're free to do that. In our next div here, we're going to have a level six heading. Watch this. Level two heading. Witness the power of startup logo in this acapella video. Paragraph with the class of lead. Just some lorem ipsum text. I'm just going to use one sentence of that. And then another paragraph with lorem ipsum. This one's going to be a bit longer. And save that. And that feature should, for the most part, be good to go. So let's refresh and have a little check here. So we have the layout is there, but we don't have that space. And we're going to, we're going to do that in CSS. It's very, very simple. So head over to your markup again, or your code editor. Head over to your CSS. And we're going to uh, give feature content some styles right here. So feature-content. And we're going to say padding, 8 rem, and 0. And then we're going to say overflow hidden because we have some images coming up. And uh, some because we're going to be using some flexbox action, uh, we can get a little bit uh, wonky with the images. They can overflow outside of the feature content div. So we're just going to say overflow hidden if anything uh, wants to flow outside of that. So that'll cover our butts there. Now if we check it out, this should look a lot better. Already looks so great. Now let's continue on and code some more. Let's jump into feature two. So we're gonna add a section with the ID of feature dash two. It's also gonna have the class of feature dash dark. And that's a, a style that we're gonna add. It's gonna have a child div with the class of container. And under that, we're gonna have a row. So div with the class of row. And, and within the row, we're gonna have a div with the class of feature dash content. And within there, we're gonna have a div with the class of call-lg-6 and the class of feature-caption. Now I'm gonna leave it there so you're not too overwhelmed. If you are using Emmet, feel free to follow this. If you're not, this is what you need to code out. So we have our feature content and feature caption. And then we're gonna keep coding here, uh, our, our skeleton. We're gonna have a div with the class of call-lg-6 and the class of text dash sm dash center and the class of hidden dash sm dash down. Now let me explain all this. We're going to have some text here and an image here. All these classes here, hidden and text sm center and all that stuff is basically when you're using a responsive site and when we scale this down, we want this div to hide. So hidden sm down means well in bootstrap 3 you should just you should just say hidden sm and that would mean on small devices small screens hide this element 
But now they have a new kind of set of helper classes in Bootstrap 4. Hidden SM down means hidden on small screens and below. But if I wanted it to hide on small screens and up, I would just say hidden SM up. So it would hide on all screens except for the extra small screen. Or, you I mean, you have kind of unlimited sort of um, flexibility here. If you wanted to hide it on medium screens and down, you could do that. Or on large screens and up, if that's even a thing. I'm not sure it is, but that's the idea. So here we want to hide it on small screens and down. So hidden on small and extra small is essentially what this is saying. Now in here, we're going to add a level six heading, which is that uh, small header at the very uh, above the header. This is what it's going to look like, for example. So we have, this is the H6 and this is the H2. So we're going to do a similar thing here. H6, this is going to say incredible feature level two heading totally random websites at the touch of your finger pads. And then I'm going to have a paragraph with the class of lead, some lorem ipsum, all good. Then I'm going to add a button. So A with the class of BTN and the class of BTN dash secondary dash outline and the class of BTN dash LG. Because this is a button, Bootstrap recommends you change the role or you give it a role attribute of button just for semantic purposes. And this will say get in on the action. And now I'm going to save that. I'm going to put an image in here in the next column here. Image this is going to be image slash iPhone one PNG. And I'm going to say iPhone. Now I got the screenshot just so you know, and just for kind of referencing purposes, uh, I got the screenshot from this graphic. I created this graphic, but I use a screenshot from the website called staggeringbeauty.com. If you want to check it out and see what it's up to, it's a totally random site. It's funny. Play around with it. Anyway, save that. Check this out. So now we have a different a swapped layout. The text over on this side, we have get in on the action button here and the screenshot or the graphic here of the iPhone. Now it kind of just floats here and it doesn't really have a cool, it doesn't have a, you know, anything to kind of distinguish it from the previous feature. So we're going to jump into our CSS and we're going to style that, uh, the dark feature. Uh, I know that sounds a little star Wars of me. Um, the feature, the class called feature dark. So feature dash dark. We added that to that, uh, section. Basically we're just gonna say background and then the color will be white. Save that. And then now you'll have something that looks a bit more like this. Now you can see this doesn't quite work out. So we need to add one more style to target that heading. So basically you just say feature dash dark level two heading color white. Whoops, color white. And that will fix the problem. That looks great. Now there is one problem here. You can see there's padding at the top and the padding at the bottom, which looks good here where the, the video doesn't go down to the bottom of the section, but here we want it to actually connect to the bottom of the, of the section and not have the space here. Cause it looks a little well, broken cutting the iPhone off there. We want it to stick to the bottom. So we need to head back to our CSS and I'm just going to add a style here, feature content. So after feature content, I'm going to say feature content image. So basically the image is I want it to have margin dash bottom of negative eight rem, which is the padding that we have on the bottom. So if it's an image, it's going to connect to the bottom because all the images we use in this website connect to the bottom of the section. And that will look like that. Perfect. It's exactly what we want. And this one still maintains its proper layout. Now, one other thing I want to do here before we continue on with the next uh, set of sections is vertically align this text in the center of the section. Now, normally you, you'd use something like tables. You'd say this whole section here was a uh, display table. And then this was display table cell and then vertical align middle. But uh, while there's nothing really wrong with that, you still could use that. But because we have access to Flexbox, that makes it even easier. I'm going to go back to brackets here. Sorry, code. I keep calling it brackets, but I mean my code editor, whatever your code editor is, uh, go back to the code editor. And now we're going to add a media query. So we're going to go to the bottom here and I'm going to add a media query. And then we're going to say media 
screen and just adding this the structure here screen and min dash width 991 pixels that is a breakpoint in bootstrap uh one of the breakpoints under nine 991 uh as the min width so everything above 991 is going to have these styles so i want feature content to display flex and then align items center so basically this says give display flex align sent um item center to feature content uh, on 991 and above. Save that. So now you'll see that will center in the middle of the section. This one did too, but uh, it was pretty much centered anyway, just by default, it just looked like it was because it's the same height as the video here. But if this was longer text, it would be centered. And in this case, it's centered in the middle. And that will keep doing it for all the other sections now. And now if we were to shrink this, let me just show you those responsive classes that we added. This image will go away once it gets to this size here, so that it just doesn't uh, it doesn't really have much meaning and it wastes space on mobile devices. So it's gone on really small screens, um, but everything is still centered nicely there, only because of the padding, not because of flexbox. So we don't need flexbox once this image goes away, which is kind of why we remove it at 991 and lower. And so that is how that works. So we're going to leave it at that. And we're going to, in the next video, we're going to code some more sections so we don't just make this video too long. So we'll see you there.